Hello everyone. I welcome you all in the fifth lecture on topic simple and compound interest, where we'll discuss another two important types today, type two and type three. While discussing these two types, I also shared some shortcuts, which comes really handy at the time of examination. So do watch the session carefully. Let us start. So let us begin with this new type. Let's read the question once. At a certain rate of simple interest, a principal becomes three times in fifteen years. In how many years will the principal amount become nine times? So let us first understand what data we are given with. It says at a certain rate of simple interest means this is a problem which is based on simple interest. Well, think from the perspective of simple interest concepts. Now, what this uh, data says a principal becomes three times in how many years? In fifteen years. So let me write it down for you. If I assume principal amount as p. According to question, P will change to 3P in 15 years. Now, this is what we are given with. Now, the question is: In how many years will the same principal amount? Will the same principal will change to? Uh, read it nine times, 9P. So we have to find out the value of time here. If principal P change to 3P in 15 years. So, in how many years the same principle will change to nine times? Now, in case of simple interest, what you have to understand when I use the three factors, you know, principle, rate, and time. When we multiply these three factors, in case of simple interest, we get the value of interest. And this is what you have to be a little careful about. Because when I multiply principle, rate, and time, in return, you'll get the value of interest. So let us try calculating the answer of this question using this formula. So what is the first case? The first case is that the principal is P. Rate is not defined. So let me assume rate as R only. Time in 15 years. So when I multiply the three factors, so P into R into T upon 100, yes, this will return me the value of interest. And this is where many of the students make mistakes. They start thinking that this 3p is the value of interest, but in actuality, 3p is the value of amount. It means before using this value, you have to convert it in the form of interest. So tell me one thing. If principal changes to 3p, if p changes to 3p, can I say that the total interest which I must have earned in 15 years, it must be 2p? The amount value is 3p, the principal is p. So if you remove principal from 3p, you will get the value of interest. So the value which I'm going to use, it would be 2p, which is the value of interest. So when I multiply p, r, and t, so I have to ensure that I'm writing the value of interest. Okay, the value of interest in the first case is 2p. Let's call this equation 1. Let's use the second case now. With the same principal, at the same rate, in how many years will the interest would be? Now, again, look at this. This is again the value of amount. So, if I ask you what is the value of interest, so if I want to change principal from P to 9P, so I need to earn a total interest of 8P. So, the value of interest, 8P. Just make sure that we are writing the right data. Now, look at the two equations. What I want to calculate? I want to calculate the value of time. Now, there can be many ways. One of the uh, best way would be divide the two equations. If you divide the two equations, you know what will happen? This 100 will cancel this 100. Principal is constant. Rate is constant. And then you would be left with, okay, let me remove this variable P with the other P. So, now you are just left with 15 upon P. This is in the left-hand side. And in the right-hand side, you would be left with 2 upon 8. And now, when you solve this, 2, 1, 2, 4 you get the value of time. Simply cross multiply. The value of time would be 15 into 4, that is 16. So in how many years, the same principal will amount to 9p in 60 years. And that is the answer of my question. So which option is going to be answered? Option 3. Now, this is the conventional way of solving this question. So after understanding how to solve this question using formula, now I want you to focus on how you could have solved this question in a better way using a visual approach. So please listen to me carefully. So let me divide the space first. What data we were given with? A principal P changes to 3P. But the problem is if I write down 3P, 
CP is the value of amount. So instead of writing the value of amount, I will directly write down the value of interest. In how many years? You would say, sir, in 15 years. This has happened in 15 years. Now, in the same principle, I want to earn an interest of 8P. Some of you might be thinking, sir, why not 9P? Why you are saying 8P? Because I am writing the values of interest here. So the interest value is 8P. If I want to change P to 9P, the amount, I have to earn an interest of 8P. And that is what I am writing in the right hand side. So in how many years this will happen? This is what I want to calculate. Once you write this, answering this question is a cakewalk. Simply see how I want to change the interest from 2P to 8P. And in order to do that, I should multiply 2P with 4, isn't it? Since I am multiplying interest value with 4, so I should multiply time value with 4 as well. 15 into 4 will give you the answer of question directly as 60 years. Can you see that we were getting the same answer? So this could be another approach. Uh, one more thing which I want you to learn, this could be uh, your third approach, a formula. Uh, the ratio of time has to be same as the interest ratio. What I am trying to tell you, if you use this formula, you can answer the question of this setup very easily. You know the first value of time, 15. The second value of time is something which I want to calculate. What is the interest value? 2P. And then I want to change 2P to 8P. So in how many years this will be achieved? If this much interest is earned in 15 years, this is what we want to calculate. And again, if you solve this, you will get 1 by 4. And what would the value of time? You will say, sir, it would be 60 years again. So this could be another approach. So just remember this as a formula and you can answer such questions in no time. So these are the three approaches which I wanted to discuss with you for solving type 2 question. Try to compare the three approaches, whichever suits you or whatever is better for a particular situation, choose that one. So this is how we solve type 2 questions. Now after understanding how to approach a type 2 problem, it is time to show you the next type, type 3. So please read the setup very carefully. At a certain rate of compound interest, principal becomes 5 times in 15 years. In how many years will the principal amount becomes 125 times? If you look at the structure of the question, structure of the question is very similar to last one. The only difference is here, the question is based on compound interest. So I'm going to apply the concepts of compound interest while solving this question. So let me first write down the data which we are given with. A principal, let me assume principal value as P. A principal change ho jata hai 5 times. Means, agar mera principal P tha, to wo kitna ban gaya? 5P ho gaya. In how many years? In 15 years. Now, in case of compound interest, what I want you to realize, when we use these factors, principal, rate and time, this is the formula which we use, we get the value of amount. And therefore, in the case of compound interest, there is no need to change this value. Because when I use the value of principal, rate and time, I get the value of amount only. So, no need to change anything in the case of compound interest. Okay. So, a principal changes to 5p in 15 years. Now, read the question. In how many years will the principal amount becomes 125 times? Now, another thing which I want you to understand. In case of compound interest, I hope you can recall, the value of principal never remains same. After every compounding period, the value of principal changes. So, if you look at this setup carefully, Mera jo compounding period ka length hai na, it is 15 years. Means, in a period of 15 years, jo mera principal hoga, jo bhi principal hoga, wo khud ka 5 times ban jayega. Now, let me ask you one question. Can you tell me the new value of principal for the next compounding period? You would say, sir, the new value of principal is going to be the value of amount which was there at the end of first compounding period. So, this is going to be the new value of principal for the next compounding period. Ab next compounding period ke liye, mera principal kya ban gaya? 5p ban gaya. And in the next compounding period, again, the length is going to be same, 15 years. In next 15 years, again, whatever is my principal value, it will become 5 times of itself. So, it is 5 times of 5p. So, you would say, sir, it will be 25p in the next compounding period. But since I want to make this amount 125, so I will not stop here. I will go to next compounding cycle. So, for the next compounding cycle, if I ask you, what is the value of new principal? You will say, sir, the value of new principal would be 25p. And again, in the next compounding period, compounding period length is 15 years. 
in the next compounding period it will again be 5 times of itself 5 times of 25p what is 5 times of 25p you would say sir this would be 125p and this is where we want to reach it read the data in how many years will the principal amount becomes 125 so we have reached to our final destination and now i'll stop okay so in how many years we have achieved this you would say sir simply add all this data 15 15 and 15 and i'll get the answer so how many compounding periods you would say sir there are total three compounding periods one two and three and for each compounding period the length is 15 years so three compounding periods of length 10 years this is one way or simply add 15 how many times three times again you will reach to the same answer 45 years so the answer of this particular question is going to be an option which says 45 so option 1 is the correct answer so this is one way of solving this question but not the only way uh, i can solve the same question using a shortcut so let me first introduce the shortcut it says a principle becomes five times itself so first write down the factor so the principle is increasing five times after every compounding period in how many years will it become 125 so i want to make 5 as 125 so try to find what power of 5 is equivalent to 125 now can i write 125 as 5 to the power 3 and in the left hand side if you compare you get to know okay the value of n would be 3 what is n here n is actually the value of number of compounding periods so how many number of compounding periods you would say three once you know how many compounding periods you already know what is the length of one compounding period the length of one compounding period is 15 years so for three compounding periods the total time comes out to be 45 so this could be one easier way using which you can answer such questions now i want to show you one more question based on the same type where you'll find the utility of the shortcut please read the question carefully a certain strain of coronavirus double itself in every 12 minutes in how much time will it become 1024 times of itself if you try solving this question using the first approach the conventional approach solving it would be a tedious task so a better approach would be use the shortcut a certain strain of bacteria doubles itself and i want to make it 1024 times so first write down that it is becoming double and then what power of 2 is 1024 let us try to find it out what power of 2 is equivalent to 1024 now at this level we expect this that you should know that what power of 2 is 1024 so 2 to the power 10 is actually 1024 so what with the value of n simply compare you would say sir value of n is going to be 10 where n is the value of number of compounding periods so how many compounding periods you would say sir 10 compounding periods what is the length of one compounding period it is 12 minutes so if for one compounding period the total time taken would be 12 minutes so for 10 compounding periods total time taken would be simply 10 into 12 that is 120 minutes and this will be the answer of my question so can you see how easily i can solve a question using shortcut and that is why it is very important for a student to learn the other approach as well the shortcut so let us close the session here i hope you were able to understand the two types and the questions based on it uh, in the next lecture we are going to discuss further types which are really crucial from the perspective of your placements so that is all for today if you have enjoyed the session please like share and subscribe thank you and have a nice day